Hey guys, what's up? Public here back with another video, and today we're talking about Season 4, specifically our Season 4 set bonus as a Shadow Priest, what it is, and how it's probably going to affect our gameplay. This is more or less a preview video of Season 4, and a lot of you guys have been asking about Season 4 content, been a little absent from YouTube lately, so this is going to kind of kick off kind of a starting series of previewing what it's going to be like to play Shadow in Season 4 of Dragonflight. So let's dive in. Okay, so for Shadow Priest in Season 4, the community has voted uh, on what tier set to bring back, and the community pretty overwhelmingly chose to bring back our Season 2 set bonus into Season 4. Now, it's important to know, I think a lot of people probably voted for this because they liked the build and how good we were at the time. Um, so it's not just going to be a vanilla copy and paste of what was happening that season. Uh, the dungeon pool is slightly different. I think only half of those dungeons are coming back um, for all of the Dragonflight dungeons. So there is going to be some changes to this and kind of what it's doing. Um, there's also been quite a lot of class changes since that as well. Um, specifically changes to base spells like Shadow Apparitions, Devouring Plague, that kind of stuff. Psychic Link has gone through the ringer a little bit, but I think it's more or less in the back where it was. Um, so yeah, so while we're getting that set bonus back from Season 4, it's not going to be an exact copy and paste of what it was like to play Shadow in that season, although there will be lots of similarities. So first things first, let's go ahead and talk about the set bonuses themselves. So... The two set in Season 4 is increases the chance for Shadowy Insight to trigger by 25%. And then when consuming Shadowy Insight, Mind Blast deals 40% increased damage and generates 4 additional insanity. So this sub bonus, even though we were already playing it, locks you into Shadowy Insight. Um, they did also buff this from Season 2. Um, Mind Blast damage went from 30% and now it's a 40% increase in Season 4. Um... Not the most impactful two-piece by any means, but you do somewhat feel this, and, and you know, just like day-to-day, -day, you're going to get more procs of Shadowy Insight, um, and then just the way that it works. Um, so that's, that is kind of nice. You get some more reactive gameplay, especially because we're giving up, basically pressing Shadow or Death hardly at all in Season 4, to coming to Season 3, where we're hitting it all the time. So at least you're getting a little bit of that, like, instant cast, uh, more, more instant cast procs for movement, but it will be significantly lower than what we have now. And then the fourth set is Devouring Plague damage increased by 18%, with every four casts of Devouring Plague increasing the damage of Shadowy Apparitions conjured within the next 10 seconds by 100%. Um, this thing also went through several rounds of buffs, so um, compared to Season 2, the Devouring Plague increase went from 15% to 18%, and the Shadowy Apparition modifier went from 80% to 100%. So they did juice both parts of the set bonus, this one definitely has more of the meat on it. Um, these guys kind of interact with each other in some way to say that, like, the two sets giving you more insanity, more procs of Shadowy Insight to give you more apparitions. Um, and then the four sets really just, like, cramming Devouring Plague damage up and then also giving you kind of a window of really good burst damage with Shadowy Apparitions. So, important to note that this is not something that you really play around in most content. Where this starts to matter is when you get into like high end mythic plus where you can actually afford to drop damage at like the end of a pack to save that 10 second window for the start of a really important pack with like full cooldowns, lust, that kind of thing. Um, there is definitely some optimization there, but for most players, you're not going to hit that too often just because of uh, how many times you're able to cast Devouring Plague. If you just play optimally, you're going to have a pretty solid uptime of the set bonus. By no means 100%, but it should be easier than it was. Um, back in Season 2, just with the increase of all of our gear and our stats. We are casting more. We will have more haste now than we did then. So, we'll see how that plays out, but uh, that's our set bonus for Season 4. Okay, so how strong is this set bonus? So, these are just kind of rough numbers, giving you an idea. Obviously, depending on the build that you're using, this will change. Um, so, these builds are all using kind of Season 4 optimized talents, which we'll cover in a future video. Um, but on single target, you can expect to get about 10 to 11% increase from this set bonus. Um, up there with what we've already seen with Season 3. And then in multi-target, uh, like sustained multi-target, you can get upwards of 12%. So 11-12% is kind of the top end damage of this set. Um, and then depending on how you can use that proc, um, you know, this will, this will vary. So in like a Mythic Plus scenario where I'm not playing around the proc at all in the sim, this increase is only about 7-8%. to 8%. Um, So you can see by default this is going to be kind of tricky just because of you know, you don't want to drop damage on pack A to get more damage on pack B necessarily. It really is strictly dependent on what exactly those pulls are and what, what your group has cooldowns for. 
So getting the full value of Mythic Plus is going to be a little trickier for some folks, but at the top end of keys, this thing can really crank, again, upwards of 12%. Um, compared to our Season 3 set bonus, it's going to give you a lot more opportunity for damage and playing around it. Um, it is important to know that the 2 set bonus is the smallest portion of this. It's probably one of the weaker 2 sets that we have this expansion. Um, it's only going to be about like 2, 3, maybe 4% at most damage, uh, which means most of the power of the set bonus is actually in the 4-piece set bonus. The reason why that's important, while you're gearing up, something to keep in mind it might take you a bit before you transition from the Season 3 set bonus, if you're wearing that today, into the Season 4 set bonus. And that's purely because the Season 3 set bonus is quite powerful. Um, although, it does do quite a lot at the Season 3 2 set. So, you, there is a possibility of running 2 set of Season 3 and 2 set of Season 4. But again, like I said, the 2 set of Season 4 isn't that great. Um, and doesn't really change too much about what you're doing, especially in like a raiding environment. Um, so it's really going to come down to the item level of the new pieces that you get. Uh, but don't be surprised if your sims are kind of showing keeping the Season 3 set bonus around a bit longer than what we've seen in, in previous patches. Just because one, the Season 3 set bonus is really strong, especially in single target. Um, and then two, you know, the, the actual power of the Season 4 set bonus comes with all four set pieces. So that's also really important because from like a build perspective, you really aren't going to change your builds until you drop the Season 3 2 set bonus. That's kind of what has activated most of our build changes. Um, so you're probably not going to run any new talents until you actually start running the full 4 set um, from, the, from Season 4. All right, the last thing I wanted to cover in this video, just kind of high level, is what is this going to mean for builds, for those of you that are curious. Um, so obviously going into Season 4, we are going to have a significantly less involved rotational tier set. Shadow or Death becomes something that you're not going to press very often at all. It basically just becomes a button that you press over like a hard-casted filler when the enemy is below 20% health. But otherwise, that's it for Shadow or Death, more or less. And that's also because... Idol of Yashiraj and Mindbender are not really going to be used much this season. So, you're again, you're getting further reasons why, like, yeah, why am I pressing Shadow or Death? You won't have Inescapable Torment with Mindbender, Yashiraj. That interaction is mostly subsided this expansion, um, especially inside of raiding. And raiding, you'll probably never see that combo being run. Um, the exception to that is still going to be in Mythic Plus Dungeons at, like, low-key levels. At low-key levels... That like inescapable torment, dark ascension play style is still going to be preferable for most people at low keys, just because things won't live long enough for void eruption to flourish. Um, and in that key build with dark ascension, you still do run mindbender and inescapable torment. So that's where shadow death will still come into play. Although again, not nearly as high of a priority as it was in season three. Like you'll still like you want to deplete mind blast, mind spike insanity, and then you can use shadow death. There is an exception of like death speaker procs. But again, that won't be used by m many people. And once we get to like the meat and potatoes of the patch, I suspect once people get to a good like meaty level of key, you're probably not going to use Dark Ascension anymore. Not sure exactly what that level is like. I'll know more once we kind of feel it out when the season actually launches. Um, but probably close to where push keys would start is when Dark Ascension will fall off again. Um, other things that I already mentioned, like Shadowy Insight becomes a lock-in talent. We're always going to take that. We already pretty much do today on live, so that's not really a big change. Um, but the other thing to think about is Devouring Plague Talents got buffed, basically. Because of the four sets' power increase to Devouring Plague, we're seeing basically all the Devouring Plague Talents look better. Uh, specifically, Void Touched, Mind Devourer, and the Mind's Eye Distorted Reality Choice. Those guys are both contributing more of our damage than they have in the past. Um, you know, Void Touch just gives you an extra 6% damage of Devouring Plague. Mind Devourer gives you a 20% modifier to Devouring Plague. And then obviously Mind's Eye and Distorted Reality affect how often you can cast the spell. And Distorted Reality also mods its damage by 20%. So there's quite a lot of stuff in that. And what that means for your builds is, one, we're seeing kind of a more lean towards Mind Flay, particularly for Void Eruption. Void Eruption will basically always be taking Mind Flay this season. Um, while you could make Spike work, Void Touch is such a strong pick now that Mind Flay just makes more sense. Um, Dark Ascension, however, is still leaning all over to Mind Spike. Although, I'll be honest, it's really close. If you prefer Mind Flay, you can even play that with Dark Ascension, even though that sounds really weird. But honestly, that's just because of how strong Void Touch is. Um, the other thing is Mind Devourer. 
it, it's actually kind of surprising, but because of how strong the Devouring Plague increase is, the builds that even that run Mind's Eye still like Mind Devour, which typically we only saw the Mind Devour pairing with Distorted Reality, but in Season 4, Mind Devour is a competitive choice to play in any contents basically all the time. Um, it's not going to be like the most top end, like, you know, eight target cleave talent um, in Mythic Plus. I could see maybe you drop that for Maddening Touch for the extra insanity generation, especially earlier on. But in terms of like single target rating, for sure, Mind Devour is probably going to be a lock in choice. And I think for overall damage for most keys, I would probably still pick Mind Devour. Although, again, we'll see how the season plays out. I think Maddening Touch will be competitive as well. As far as the Mind's Eye Destroyed Reality choice, you know, usually you're still seeing Destroyed Reality be the preferred choice for, like, overall damage. You're going to get, like, about 10% more overall damage if you can, like, spread Devouring Plagues with Destroyed Reality. That being said, you know, spreading that damage for max overall isn't always the best thing to do. A lot of people that push high keys like the priority target damage, which I suspect will still be really strong as, like, a damage type in Season 4. So for that reason, I think you'll probably still see quite a lot of Mind's Eye in Dungeons because you get like almost 20% more priority target damage than like the spreading, devouring play style with Destroyed Reality, which is a pretty big deal. Um, and a lot of people don't like managing devouring play on like multi-target, so you can see that too. Um, other talent notes to, to talk about is Phantasmal Pathogen. So again, we're playing around a tier set with Shadowy Apparitions. One, there is a huge opportunity here. If you haven't tried the kind of spreading devouring plague build with distorted reality, this just gets better with phantasmal pathogen and our new set bonus because you're just spreading out that that increase to more targets. It's a very powerful modifier, especially with the four set. You can get some crazy apparition damage by spreading devouring plague um, if you want that play style. But that being said, if you're playing Mind's Eye, Phantasmal Pathogen is still a fantastic point for single target or priority target damage. So I suspect that Phantasmal Pathogen will be also a lock-in choice, both points, for basically every build this season. Now, Void Eruption will also be used quite a bit this patch because of these changes. You will not see it in like a pure single target environment. It's still, you know, it's still behind Dark Ascension and pure single target, unfortunately. Um, but where you will see it kind of used is depending on like the fight timers, maybe it makes more sense for a full two minute spec. I could see that maybe happening. Uh, what is likely though, is that you'll only see it in the kind of multi-target council scenarios, which there are several of those bosses in season four, since we're rotating through all of the raids. So raids is probably going to be dark ascension for, for the most part. Um, and then mythic plus you'll kind of start with dark ascension and then move into void eruption as you go higher up in the keys. So, that is the kind of uh, season four preview of kind of our set bonus and how it's going to affect all of our choices. Stay tuned for more videos about kind of season four content in general. And let me know in the comments what you're looking to see for new videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everyone that supports me on this channel and on Patreon. And we'll see you in the next video.